What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to That One Actor. I would like to start a mini-series out of this video. This video would be the first video that I do of the mini-series. If I don't get any comments or input from you guys from it, I won't make any more videos like this one. This is just something that I'm using as a entertainment video until I can finish the Christmas video that I'm doing right now. It probably won't be done till Friday, so be on the lookout for that. It'll be dropped next Wednesday. What I'm going to do with this video is I want to do what a lot of people call mansplaining with a twist. And the twist is I'm not going to make this frustrating. If you know what mansplaining is, then you can understand how that would be frustrating. However, if you don't know what mansplaining is, I will put it right here. Go ahead and look that up. I'm not going to get into detail about what mansplaining is, but watch the entire video first before you do. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a subject that I may or may not have knowledge on. I would prefer things that I don't have any knowledge on or things that I know very little about, like for example, space shuttles, that's going to be the topic of today's thing. Now, I know what you're thinking, but before you click off of this video, hear me out. This is going to be, hopefully, one of the most entertaining videos that I do. And I've, I've already tested this with a couple of people, and they found it absolutely entertaining. So stay right here, and don't go anywhere, and we will get to that in just one second. So what I need from you is if you do not find this video entertaining, I asked that you do not put any input in the comments as to like future videos, giving me ideals on what you would like me to explain in my creative imagination. But if you do find it entertaining, I asked that you pick something you either know a lot about and you would just like to see how I could put a creative spin on how it's done or put something in the comments that you would like to know that you have no knowledge about whatsoever, like astrophysics, something like that. I, I have no clue about astrophysics. So if you ask me to explain astrophysics to a basic person, I will have to make a different video on that. But it, it can be anything. It could be how something is made, how it could be how something works, like um, photosynthesis or how, how rain is created, something like that. Like I'll put a creative spin on whatever you guys throw at me. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, then give me some input on what you would like the next video to be. It won't be the one right after this, but it will be in the future type videos. If you do not enjoy the video, I apologize. This is just a test. If I don't get as much input as I would like, then this video will probably end the series. I'll, I'll make future videos. It just won't be about mansplaining. So let me explain what I'm talking about here. So mansplaining, we're going to go with space shuttles. Now, this is the exact thing that I did for the group of people that I explained this to when I was going to do my video. I'm going to explain to you the creative side of space shuttles. And before I explain this to you, this is strictly for entertainment. Everything I'm telling you may or may not be accurate. Some things might just sound goofy. Some things might sound really interesting. This is just off the top of my head. Like if I had to explain a creative way that something was made or how something works, this is how I would explain how space shuttles are made in an entertainment type environment. So let's get right into this. Space shuttles are very unique. NASA is the, the biggest company, probably the only company that does space shuttles. They have a group of people that build their space shuttles on the launch pad. So they're not built in some factory and then shuttled over to the, the launch pad. 
I've never seen a space shuttle tow truck. You might have, but I've never seen one. I don't think they exist. How this works is NASA calls up this group of highly trained elf-like engineers. I, I say elves because elves can make a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. Hence Christmas. Elves make all of them toys for Santa. So that's got to be who's making all these space shuttles in such short of a time span. You'll be watching on TV on how they're going to shoot this guy up into space and there'll be no space shuttle there. And then like a week later, there's this 7,000 foot tall space shuttle out of nowhere. It's like it popped up overnight. It's got to be the elves, right? It's got to be the elves. So how this works is, is the elves get that phone call from, from NASA and they're like, we need a space shuttle. Guys going to the moon, Venus, anything like that. We need this space shuttle by Friday. It's Monday right now. We need it by Friday. Okay, we got you. They hang up. They go to delegating how this is going to be done. They got their design guy who writes it, sketches it down on a piece of paper. So what happens first after they have a blueprint of how they're going to make this space shuttle? They start by getting in these huge... I cannot emphasize how huge the truck is for these huge trucks. And then they drive all the way to this Area 51 site to grab a, a dragon. That's why we don't see any, because the elves have the dragons on lockdown whenever NASA needs a space shuttle. They go down to Area 51 and grab a dragon. Actually, they grab two. I'll explain the second one here in a minute. But they grab two dragons... They stick them in the back of this truck, and then they drive it all the way back to the launch pad. Now, they park the truck next to the launch pad, and then they lock it. That way, the dragons can't get out. They start putting this thing together, and it's almost like Lego blocks, but they're hollow on the inside. So they'll start with, like, the thruster, and then they'll put that on. Then they'll grab the outer parts of the space shuttle, and they'll start finagling all these pieces up until they get this, like cargo hold and the cargo hold is what holds the first dragon now the first dragon is the biggest dragon of the two it's like the mom they put the mother dragon in the bottom in the cargo hold and i'll explain what he or she does here in a second the first dragon goes in the cargo hold they keep building the space shuttle higher and higher and higher and then they make a second smaller cargo hold you know how when the space shuttle reaches that perfect point how it like drops off the big thrusters and then has those smaller thrusters that's where the second dragon comes in now the second dragon is the smaller dragon so it doesn't have all the energy to blow out fire but it has enough to get by until the astronauts have to come back so they put the second dragon in the smaller cargo hold it's about a little bit higher than the first cargo hold and then they make the cargo hold for the astronauts whenever they're in space and then they make the cockpit i don't know what it's called in a space shuttle but it's it's going to be the cockpit today so the cockpit is where all the astronauts sit waiting on the people behind the computers to say go and how this works is it takes about four days to build this space shuttle all seven thousand feet of it no space shuttle there on monday thursday it's there ready to go fueled up Dragons are good to go. They're fed. Everything's good. Friday morning, the astronauts come in. They get inside the cockpit. NASA counts down. You know how they do the 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, when it gets to three, that first dragon, the bigger dragon, is trained. Three is a trigger word. He or she is sitting there listening. They're hearing all these noises from 10 to 1. And then they hear three, and then they're triggered. And when the dragon hears three, it's like ready. Two, it gets even more ready. One, it is so far on point that nothing is going to get in the way of this dragon fulfilling what it needs to fulfill. When NASA says zero, and they say liftoff, that dragon is going to get triggered again. And it is going to blow fire into the thrusters. Now, when the dragon blows fire into the thrusters, it synthesizes the fire 
and it makes it into rocket fuel. That's when you see the shuttle start to take off. So that dragon is pushing fire down into those thrusters and then it lifts right up into the air. Now, when they're at that certain point, that first dragon will drop off of the shuttle. Then you'll only have the smaller shuttle, how they navigate through the outer space. You've seen movies, you know how this works. They've got the big space shuttle and then a quarter of the way up, once they reach the atmosphere, that first half drops off and then they've got only half the size of that space shuttle. Now we've got the cockpit, the cargo hold for while they're in space. And then we've got the smaller dragon. Now, once they're in space, we've already launched. They're in space. They're circling the, the earth, doing everything they need to do. This is where the second dragon comes in. Now the smaller dragon is sitting in its cargo hold. It's looking at the thrusters. These thrusters are smaller because it's a smaller dragon. Now how this works is the main astronaut pushes a button whenever they need to go in a certain direction. And that button will cause a mechanism to poke that dragon. And whichever way that it pokes the dragon, that's which thruster it's going to blow fire into. Now, it's only going to be like a short spurt to be able to push them in the direction that they need. So if they need to go left, he is going to push that button and it's going to poke that dragon in the right side and he's going to fire through the right thruster, which is going to push him to the left. But if they need to go right, he's going to push that button and it's going to poke the dragon in the left side and he's going to throw fire into the left side and they're going to go right. Makes sense? Makes sense. Once everything is finished and the astronauts come back home, the first dragon that fell off the space shuttle has a parachute that is attached to the cargo hold. And when it gets whatever safe distance from the ground, that parachute's going to expand and that dragon's going to hit the ground very softly and they're going to take that dragon back and take it back to Area 51 until they need it again. It's on rest duty. So it gets to rest until it's needed again. The second dragon never goes out of the cargo hold. It stays in there as long as needed. And then whenever the astronauts are done, they'll re-enter the atmosphere and just use Earth's gravity to come back down. And then, like you've seen in the movies, that parachute comes out of the back and then they land safely. Well, what you don't see is the guys from Area 51 come back to get that smaller dragon too. And then everything's done. Every, everybody goes home. So just to recap, the elves make the space shuttle. NASA calls the elves. They make it in a week. They drive down to Area 51, pick up two dragons, build the space shuttle over the dragon, go up. First dragon falls off. Second dragon powers the ship through space. They come back down inner Earth's atmosphere, and then that's the whole thing. Area 51 comes back, gets the two dragons, and then they start right back over. Now, like I said, this is strictly for entertainment purposes. Don't try to take this to school and be like, yeah, I know how space shuttles are made. That one actor on YouTube taught me everything I know. Don't do it. You're going to fail because maybe you can figure out what's true and what's not. Maybe you can't. So until next time, I just ask that if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more of the mansplaining, feel free to drop a comment saying what you'd like me to explain next. We can do anything from explaining astrophysics to explaining how oil lubricates the car. That's very interesting. But you let me know. If I don't know, I'll research it just enough and then put my own creative spin on it. If I know it, I will explain it to you fully. Other than that, I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.